we are back again with Great Sound Lab, and today we will talk about angle transducers. I'm Yamo, and I'm here with the headphone legend Axel Gray. So thanks uh, for joining us again. Yeah, thank you for being here again. Uh, so yes, what do we mean when we talk about transducer angling? Yeah, so uh, normally, or traditionally, the drivers are right over the ears, more or less parallel to the uh, head, the skin of the head, and uh, or on the ear when it's on ear headphones. And uh, in the late eighties, to be honest, but I think that was really the first one. Uh, AKG came with something that was not really a headphone but a near phone, so something where the drives were really just in front of the ears, so there was nothing, no ear pad or something like that. It was just in front of the ears. You could change the angle, by the way, mm -hmm. of these ones. And that was, for me, a very inspiring design. Uh, okay, so there was a lot of a lack of bass, but this, this thing that, that the drivers could be put into different angles, that was something very inspiring for me. And yeah, so that is an angle driver. And uh, yeah, so this is the definition. And the more they are in front of the ear, so they say this is the angle of zero degrees. So when it's really like that, and that is the angle of 90 degrees. And uh, yeah, so this is an angle driver. Cool, thank you. So uh, you can angle a transducer, so much we got. Uh, and what would be the benefits now for, for a listener? So compared to a traditional headphone, maybe like the classic HG600 series are a good example of a traditional headphone in that sense, of a zero yeah. degree angle? Yeah, so it's because of, you know, we are all completely different. Mm -hmm. Our um, anatomy is very, very individual. So not only our fingerprints are very individual, but our, the geometry of our outer ear and inner ear is very different from one to each other, uh, to another as well. And so because the geometry is different, um, the frequency response at the eardrum from a source is very, very different. So when you have a loudspeaker or someone's talking to you, uh, the sound is coming to you, it's banded by your yes, head, by your body, it's reflected here. And the most important thing is the outer ear, it is some parts of the sound is going in directly when it's coming from the front and some parts are reflected uh, at the pinner here. And so, uh, yeah, get a very individual pattern from that sound source, and it's very much dependent on the angle where it comes from. Yeah. So the more it comes from the front, the more influence of your individual geometry you have, the more it just comes from the 90 degrees angle. So from here, uh, the less impact uh, has this geometry because it's going more directly into the ear canal. Yeah. Uh, now we have the situation that music is created to be played in front of you. This is the normal situation. When you're listening to somebody, you turn your head to the speaker. When you're going to show your listening uh, yeah, to the things are happening on the stage and your head is towards the stage and your ears as well. And so music for or theory recordings are played back by two speakers and an uh, angle of 30 degrees in that direction and minus 30 degrees in that direction from the middle axis of your head. So this is how music is should be played back. This is how it is mixed. So it should, in the studio you have exactly that situation. You have these two speakers and um, the mix is done on these speakers. Of course, they are listening to headphones as well to say, okay, it sounds good on the headphone as well, but the main mix happens with loudspeakers. And when you're listening to the same recording with uh, headphones, traditional headphones, you get it really from that angle. So from here and there, mm -hmm. and you have a completely different frequency response on your eardrum yeah. than from the front because, and it's not that much dependent on your individual geometry. So when you are listening, for example, to an HD650 or HD600, you hear it more with my ears, because I've designed these, uh, than with your own ears. Mm -hmm. And um, so I want to get rid of that 
So I want to um, create a situation where it's possible to hear the music with your own ears again. Yeah. Uh, this is very unusual. So this is an unusual listening experience, I know, but it's more right than to listen to the music just with my ears. Yeah. And um, yeah, so this is why I've always had the idea, okay, you have to bring the angle or need to uh, bring the speakers more to the front of, uh, of the ears. Yeah. Yes, and the HD 5X whatever headphones, uh, so that wasn't the approach. The, when you look at the HD 800, that was the next approach. And now we have the OEE one, where it went a little bit to an extreme, but I think it's it's the right way to do it. Uh, well, they are really in front of the ears, and yeah. Okay. So so your uh, let's say your main motivation is that it's sort of an individualized equalizer. So yeah, um, that it's basically perfectly matched to your individually individual HRTF because you have. Well, not a perfect match, but it's more similar to your personal yeah. HRTF and not to yours. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but, but if you ask an audio file and would ask them about uh, angle transducers, then they would probably tell you about soundstage. That uh, headphones with an angle transducer have a wider soundstage. The H800 is probably the most famous example. Yeah. So uh, what do you think is a correlation there? Um, so probably comes from a very similar angle. Uh, and also, um, is there a sort of a golden spot for it? Because the HG800, for instance, doesn't have an extreme angling. It's, I, I think, less than 10 degrees, if I remember correctly. And it's still re regarded as probably the widest sound stage you can have in a headphone. Um, so first, what is the interaction? And is there a sort of a golden spot if you want maximum sound stage? Yeah, it's, uh, it's not only the angle driver. Mm -hmm. So um, um, it's, it's uh, how wide is the um, sound field you're creating okay and uh, the impact of what is coming first to the eardrum and what's coming later so that gives the key for the sound stage and when you look at the hd 800 and it's 56 millimeter driver there are parts of the sound going in here and some others are starting here somewhere a little bit more away and going in there and that gives a pattern mm -hmm. to Together with your individual ear that creates a sound stage as well. So that was an idea. So when you're listening to planners where, yeah. where the, you have a big uh, surface as well and they are done in the right way. <laughs> uh, uh, planners could uh, sound very small and muffled as well when yeah. they are not done in the right way. That's when they are done in the right way, uh, they could create wide sound stages. Listen to an HE1, for yeah. example. The sound stage is they are not as wide as with an HD 800, but it is more ho homogeneous. Yeah. And um, so this is another thing that plays a role as well. But the angle drivers is, and it's more artificial, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so the angle drivers getting the sound really from the front and getting the right keys uh, is the right way to do it. So when the sound in a natural sound field is coming from the front, um, you don't know where sound is coming from um, or you detect the, the direction where sound is coming from, not only by the intensity, so how loud it is on this ear or that ear, but by the time differences when it occurs to this ear or that ear. Yeah. Okay, that is in the recording mm -hmm. and by the patterns that are um, created at the eardrum. So yeah. we, and that gives you the info, information where does the sound come from. And the better you got your individual pattern, the better uh, is the reproduction of this image. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like yeah, looking to someone else's glasses or to your own glasses. Or yes, when you don't wear glasses, just look at without anything in front of your eyes in that case. But uh, with again bring that back to ears so you hear it with your own ears, hear your own pattern, and then when the image is done right in the recording, you get that idea better than you get it with just yeah listening to it with my ears or somebody else's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. But the main reason for the angle drivers is not soundstage. It is to give uh, 
the listener the right information or the right pattern at uh, at the eDrum that is his or her pattern and not the pattern of me. Yeah. Okay. So so that's the main motivation. So really, con uh, that it really sounds individualized to every person. And I, I would just go a little bit uh, into that direction one more. So for the last question is uh, consistency. So for some headphones, people are a bit, uh, when they measure the headphones, they start complaining a bit that the headphone measures very differently depending on where it sits. And my question would be, does angling the transducer help with consistency with, with seating? Or is it sort of neutral? Or uh, do you have some, some experience there? Uh, I have some experience with that. Of course, the, the position of uh, the headphones is, uh, because you have a sound outlet somewhere here, mm -hmm. is uh, something that influences the perceived sound a lot. And when you just move it here somewhere a little bit forth and back, the influence of that is not as big as when you move it here up and down. Or yeah. So it is, uh, uh, the positioning is bigger. Yeah. Uh, the influence of the positioning is bigger. But uh, you, as an individual, have very good knowledge where how to position it because you hear it if it is positioned right or not. So when you don't do it, oh, I have to position it the right way, but you just put it on and um, position it a little bit forth and back, yeah, you will find it very fast. Don't think about it. Just li listen to it and put make some movements and that's it so normal individuals can do that without training so they just do it and it sounds good yeah i, I think that's a good closing message actually uh, in the sense that just trust your ears so uh, i think there's a lot of uh, like talk about measurements and so on and that's all really valuable work but still at the end of the day most people just try to enjoy sound so uh, as Axel said just put on the headphones and uh See if it works for you. Maybe you can try around a little bit, but in the end, you can be confident that, that you know yourself what you like and what sounds good to you. So, um, yeah, well, with that message, I, I think we're done here. So thanks yeah. a lot, Axel, for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. It is not about headphones. It's about music, okay? So enjoy the music. And tune in the next time when we talk about headphones and music, maybe. Yeah, frequency yeah. response. So it's getting technical again. Sorry. Okay. But, <laughs> but we promise you it's going to be fun. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Until next time.